everybody. Welcome to the Groovy Room. I'm, of course, the Deadhead Daddy. And we all know the Record Store Day just happened. Now, personally, I don't think Record Store Day serves the purpose that it was originally supposed to. Those of us that collect vinyl, we know where to get it from now. But it's a big corporate thing now, and everybody's got to make their money, so yada, yada, yada. Anyways, it's not something I'm overly excited about anymore, but I still usually pop into my local record store after the rush and see what's left. I figure if I'm supposed to have an album, it'll be there. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about my record store day haul, and I'm going to talk about um, some stuff I picked up on a recent family trip to Kentucky. So let's get right into the haul. Alright, first up on the list is Hawkwind. There you go, and this is the Iron Dream live in 1977. Forgive me, but I'm old and I can't remember things, so I gotta read along. <clears throat> Anyways, in September of uh, 1977, Hawkwind undertook a UK tour to promote the album Quark, Strangeness, and Charm. The shows were some of the finest of this era of the band, featuring Robert Calvert as a dynamic frontman. This release, available first at record stores as part of Record Store Day, features all previously unreleased recordings newly mixed from the original multi-track tapes and pressed on clear vinyl. Mixed from the original 8-track master tapes by Ben Weiserman, with Mark Powell at Road Lake Studios, Hirschfire, Her, 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 Fordshire in July of 2022. So, yes, here it is. Hold on. Uh, this is the album. I'll show you the groovy uh, vinyl here in a minute. Maybe. <laughs> oh, here we go. Look at that. Beautiful clear. Beautiful clear. My lights in the, in the groovy room are reflecting off it, so that's kind of cool. So anyways, um, yes, I'll be honest, um, it's a cool album, but it's not the grooviest Hot Wind album I have, but it's still a cool album. If you see it, pick it up. All right, what's next? All right, up next is... Record, door, record Store Day exclusive of the Strawberry Alarm Clock Psychedelic Classic Incense and Peppermints. Groovy, groovy album, by the way. Alright, <clears throat> here we go. Notes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I'm trying, man. Strawberry Alarm Clock's Incense and Peppermints marked one of the psychedelic era's rare moments at the top of the charts. The title track skyrocketed to number one on the Billboard Hot 100, while the album would reach 11 on the Billboard 200 album chart. Along with Incense and Peppermint's two other tracks from the album, The World's on Fire and Rainy Day, Mushroom Pillow, were featured in Psych Out, the 1968 counterculture era psychedelic movie starring one Jack Nicholson. Did a lot of those movies, man. Anyways, um, the title track would later appear in the film Austin Powers International Man of Mystery. Now, this special record store day release was pressed on bubblegum pink vinyl. So let's check that out. Alright, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, so this is pretty groovy, man. I love the color of this. So here we go. Look at that. Really pink, really pretty, really psychedelic of the era. I do dig it a lot. And again, this is an absolute classic album. If you're into psychedelic music, it should definitely be in your collection. Definitely. Okay, now we got a big one. Well, you know, on Record Store Day, when you're uh, shopping at your favorite record store, you always go through the used bin. And looky, 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 looky what I found. Ah, can you dig it? I know I can. <clears throat> All right. Uh, here we go. The 
greatest rock and roll band of all time, The Grateful Dead's ninth studio album from 1977, of course, Terrapin Station, is one of my favorite albums, and it's been a grail album for a long, long time. At least on vinyl. I've had it on CD forever, but... It was the first Grateful Dead album on Arista Records and the first studio album after the band returned to live touring following a nearly two-year hiatus. The album reached number 28 on the Billboard album chart and achieved gold album status in 1987, the year I got on the bus. After being released for the first time on CD by Arista Records, following the release that year's in the dark. So yeah, we know. It's all the touch of great thing, man. And I don't care what anybody says. I still love that song. It's the song that got me on the bus. I dig it. So yes, I am very happy to have Terrapin Station, the Turtles, the Terrapins are my favorite of all the Grateful Dead icons. And there was a part of me that actually, because it wasn't very much, um, that I kind of hoped that uh, it didn't play so I could frame it. But oh well, <laughs> I'll come across it again. So... Yes, Terrapin Station. Do -do -do -do. All right. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is the CD re-release of the soundtrack to Zabriskie Point. With this cool little holographic cover. Ta -da. Yes, yes, Zabriskie Point. Da -da -da -da, Zabriskie Point. Anyways, um. <clears throat> this hard-to-find soundtrack features several rare Pink Floyd tracks and contributions by, of course, the Grateful Dead and Jerry Garcia's solo work, <clears throat> the Young Bloods, the Kaleidoscope, and many more. This remastered release from 1997 features a bonus disc of alternate takes of several of the songs, and, I might add, was in heavy rotation back in my uh, younger hardcore party days. So, um, it was known back in those days that my best friend was a huge Floyd head, so he had anything that had the name Pink Floyd, he had it. And then I was the dead head, so that was natural to be added into the heavy rotation. Alright, hope you're having fun so far, haha. <laughs> Alright, while we are in Louisville, <clears throat> visiting family. I convinced everybody to stop at this really rad store called The Great Escape. It's a record store, comic book shop, toy store. It's just an amazing place. And I can't wait for our trip coming up soon because I hope to go back and spend a little bit more time there. Anyways, I found this really cool record with this really rad cover. I know. All right, and it is album Ross by the band Ross. <laughs> Figure. Anyways, uh, there's not a whole lot that I've been able to find on this groovy ass record yet. Um, I haven't checked in a week or so. But anyways, guitarist and frontman Alan Ross was expected to be the next Eric Clapton in the early 70s. But it never quite worked out for him. You can hear that promise in the tracks on this album. Really cool, proggy, psychedelic album. It's really cool. If you can find it, definitely check it out. Apparently, from what little I have found out, this is a rare find, and the cover art is super trippy as hell, like I said. Um, like I showed you, man. It's a really cool album. I remember uh, we walked in, and of course, I'm looking for some dead, and for some other stuff and some record store day stuff and uh, we don't get to and um, that was when I was checking out that was on the counter and um, I asked if they were for, if it was for sale and she was like yeah I haven't put it out yet so I uh, listened to, real quick on YouTube to this album and and I think I got a minute into it and it's like yeah I'll take it so a cool find um, a cool story so yeah okay right back with even more. <laughs> All right, while in Kentucky, I did find something I was looking for for Record Store Day, and that was Willie Henderson and the Soul Explosions 
funky chicken. Oh yeah. Mm. You know me, I like me some funk. <clears throat> so. <coughs> Excuse me. Funky Chicken is the 1970 album from again Willie Henderson and the Soul Explosions. As evident by the name, it's indefinitely danceable from the moment you press play, and that is absolutely true. 100%. Definitely playable. The band's potent blend of soul and bayou funk makes for a very exuberant sounding record. Ooh, college word, exuberant. Where the grooves are endless and the funk never stops. <clears throat> The record was initially released on the legendary Brunswick Records, famous for signing soul artists such as Jackie Wilson and one of my favorites, The Shy Lights. Mm. Bonus track, Loose Booty, not included on the original LP, will be instantly recognizable to those of you out there who are fans of the Beastie Boys, who sample the intro. You know, Yo, Professor, what's another name for pirate treasure? You know that, that, that part. Now it's available for the first time in more than a decade thanks to ORG Music. <laughs> and because it's Record Store Day, uh, it comes in this really, really groovy orange color. Kind of reminds me of the push pops we used to get in the summer, you know? Yeah, one of those, yeah. That concludes the audio portion of the hall this time, but check out this gem I picked up. Nice little artwork of Jerry there, skeleton, who doesn't like relics? Uh, so, uh, which, by the way, uh, Relics is still being published these days, and I'll put a link to their website down at the bottom. And all this other stuff that I've got, I'll try to put links in the description. So uh, if you want to try to track it down, go ahead. Of course, dead.net as well. Anyways, um, <clears throat> volume 17, number six issue of Relics Magazine from December 1990 is completely, completely rad as hell. Completely. Um, back in those days, as in the 90s, when I was introduced to the zine, there were awesome features like uh, Grateful Dead photos, word lines based on the band, and, and uh, We Are Everywhere section with fan pics, and of course Dead set lists, Ways the Dre Tape, and uh, Correspond with Fellow Heads. Ah, uh, the days before the internet. Yeah, all well, you younger heads, you don't understand, man. Like, for some of us, tapes were hard to come by, and um, we had no he head friends. You know, some of us, I still don't have a whole lot of dead head friends, so if you want to be my friend, subscribe. But um, anyways, uh, no, like, it was a way for us to talk to each other or find out where the next show was or trade tapes or whatever, man. So, you know community like it always has been, and that's how we did it back in the 90s, and earlier, so Relics Magazine is just iconic to us old school kids. Alright, I got one more little treasure that I picked up. Alright, here we go, issue 56 of Unbroken Chain. Look at that beautiful artwork. Um, just for the record... I will be uh, framing these two magazines, um, putting it on the wall in the green room just because they're rad and they got memories and stuff like that. I haven't seen them on the internet. They're not incredibly uncommon, but I don't care, man. I think it's So anyways, um, <clears throat> now, issue 56 of Unbroken Chain. From the summer of 1996. Mm -hmm. Um... Pretty similar to, uh, to Relics in a, in a lot of ways. Um, I did buy this because of, I've never seen one of these in the wild before. 
And the cover by Lewis Newer is super, super. Imagine my surprise, though, and delight, when I saw an ad in, for the Northeast Ohio jam band legends in our area, um, Ouroboros, Ouroboros, sorry, and um, saw an ad for them in these pages, and so I just thought that was really, really freaking, freaking cool, and so, so yeah, really freaking cool, so this is definitely something I'm happy to have. Again, I'm going to be framing those bad boys, and um, they're not in the best of shape. Either there's a lot of writing in it, like notes, oh, I have this show or whatever, but that's part of the history man, of uh, being a deadhead back in the day, and um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find something here, so um, that's just, you know, that classifies, you know, a lot of it in these, and um, clearly the same person owned them, but um, that's just part of the life, man. So to me, it's part of the history. They were in mint condition. <laughs> but these are well loved by another head, and uh, they have been passed on to me, so I'm grateful. Well, that's it for this episode of the Groovy Room. Um, stories from the Groovy Room. You know, I'm trying to come up with some more content, but I just started a new work hours. And, well, you don't care about that, man. More content is on the way, so I ask you each and every one of you to help this page explode and to do that you know just like my videos subscribe tell your friends and I got social media everywhere you can follow me with TikTok, Insta, Facebook, Spotify just follow me man and help me be huge so we can have some genuine fun deadhead content out there um sorry I didn't look at the camera but it'll get better so uh and as promised, there is some Dead 101 content coming. That is a thing that I want to do where I have some dead history for you, but it's not the paths well trap. It is stuff that if you're a newer fan, you may not know. You know, so trying to educate, going beyond Jerry and Bobby and all the guys, you know, digging a little deeper than that. So keep tuning in thank you for all those that have subscribed and liked share this um keep an eye out for me i won't be wearing this i'll be wearing my um, big hat but uh i will be at the dead and company show this year 2023 at um star lake and then i will be returning to the july 21st fish show star lake so keep an eye out for me I'll have some stickers. Come say hi. Tell me if you like the show. And if you like what I'm doing, comment too. Uh, give me some feedback. Tell me some things you want to see, some things you want me to expand on. All right. Again, thank you for watching and hanging out with me, man. And uh, I'll see you real soon. Peace and be grateful.